Yeah, uh, one of my one of the colleagues in the UK they were saying to me, Sam, there's so much now that's being written on all these things. So many case studies. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know how to handle it now. The good old days of uh, one article per year on land grabbing <laughs> could, was manageable. So we, we clearly have a problem. We've got a lot of information, but it's a good thing also that we have all these studies. And so this makes it more difficult to, to even think about what is big or not big, or what drives or doesn't drive. I think this in itself is a question as, as to how do we think about what is big or not big. So that's my first question, big question. The second, second question, big question that I thought, I, I did raise this last time in, uh, in Sussex. Somehow I think there was no response, <laughs> not, not enough response. The question is, is that there is a big scramble, scramble in the classical sense of the notion of scramble, not in the ordinary dictionary huh, use of the term, but really both in thinking about imperialism, capital, huh, and the states scrambling for power and control, not only of the resources, but of the territories and the politics of the regions. There is a big scramble for Africa. You've heard the news about Mali, okay? I'm speaking to my colleagues, we're trying to understand this. This is one of the biggest reservoirs of land, water, minerals, right, in Africa. So, so what is the story? Mali, for instance, represents a country which was part of a second wave, post-colonial wave of scramble. South African capital about 15, 20 years ago. Now we have this big rush. The, the, the political, the military interventions that are proposed are way beyond the, the direct and immediate political problems that are confronted. So suddenly it's a longer term struggle for the control of that territory, the nation, and the politics. This is the case, I believe. I'm going to use African examples. I know more about that. Ivory Coast, there's a huge intervention there. No matter what you think about the good governance problems and so forth, finally, it's a big scramble for control of the territory. Libya, you know that story. Surely, everybody knows that story. Uh, the, the DRC, the Sudan, Ethiopia, and so forth. How are the so-called 20 countries around which there's a major for, so, sort of land grabbing, how are these tied into the emerging security arrangement around Africa, the American security arrangements that are being built up, no more just as from one central point, but in many different sites. So what is cause and effect uh, in terms of the scramble, the military, militarization, the conflicts that are happening in these countries, and the ensuing uh, uh, land grabbing that is taking place. So I think that the same story can be said about Zimbabwe, South Africa. The, the struggle for control of that region. This was historically a major uh, point of security in the NATO arrangement. That has weakened in the last 20 years. The decolonization and the rearrangement of politics and the, the radicalization that has happened in Zimbabwe and other places. So we can think, we have to think in a longer and broader perspective about the geopolitical and geostrategic questions that are defining this. So, okay, so, so there's a lot of talk about, okay, with the speculative holding of resources, or positioning, which is not, does not amount to actual utilization of these resources that are being grabbed. This is part and parcel, I think, of a broader question that has to be answered. What are the geopolitical, geostrategic questions? Okay. So if there's a way to get many of the case studies and so forth, 
uh, uh, drawn up, in positioned, contextualized, but really to answer the, this bigger question. I think, in my view, this is going to be the determining question over the next 10, 15 years. And related to that is my third question. Is it third now? Okay. Come in. Is that, and I think here I would probably be tying up to a couple of comments made around markets by Jesse and Minister. So, as this grabbing is going on and this dispossession, is there a major uh, reconfiguration of the markets, not only globally? But in terms of within the territories in Africa, are we seeing a major reconfiguration? And uh, 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 a, a new definition of state market relations. This, I think, is an emergent dimension, not only because some of the grabbing nations themselves have a different form formulation of the state market relation, China and so forth. But because the kind of scale of deals <laughs> requires a different role of the state in relation to markets. So, so one dimension of reconfiguration of markets. Yeah, there's a this talk about elites and so forth. I don't like that term elites because which elites and <laughs> but really the domestic capital, external capital. Mm -hmm. what kind of shift in the relation is happening as a consequence of these. So, so, I mean, this has implications for markets across agriculture, various levels of inputs and services around the resources that are being grabbed. So a whole range of markets, commodity markets, input markets, and so forth. Mm -hmm. we, we see that, for instance, uh, with uh, empirical evidence, at the national scale, for instance, we take Zimbabwe, Malawi, you know, some of these countries, you have a reconfiguration east-west of input and output commodity markets. And even the, the exchange, the nature of the exchange relations, you know, forward exchange, butter, currency swapping, there are all sorts of new arrangements in the markets that are emerging. And I think that these are implicit in a number of case studies, but they're also explicit in certain longer term financing that is going out in the countries which are subject to a major scramble. So reconfiguration of markets, that's my second or third, third. Okay, I'll get to the fourth. <laughs> fourth, finally. Now here I'm uh, fully at one with uh, Shamila, Shamila, about the issue question of resistance. Now, are we discussing the alternatives through uh, 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 what kind of reform is happening? Certainly, there's no socialist revolution eh, in any, <laughs> any of the resistances that we have seen recently. There are different shades of reformism that are happening. And I think, and what is good reform or, or all style bad reformist uh, 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 responses? No. I think that this question has to be rethought because the alternatives uh, today are different from the alternatives that we could imagine or were, we grew up in, if you are, if you are my age, <laughs> of what the alternatives were. And in this case, uh, we, you know, the range is wide. Repossession of all these, the above, land, whatnot, whatnot. Uh, Re-agrarianization, repeasantization, decommodification. The range is wide, and the forms of the reform and the nature of organization around it is varied. New forms of cooperativism, organization, at local, national, level, and regional, new forms of regional integration ideas which are still to come to fruition. I think that we have to explore this 
in order to define the terrain or the strategic uh, uh, resistance, line of resistance in the future. I mean, this way maybe the scholars can also contribute something. Thank you. Yeah.